So what I would like to do, I would like to uh, go back to our presentation regarding design patterns. And in fact, the, the design pattern that we're going to uh, cover today is a composite. So composite is a well-recognized design pattern which basically facilitates management of tree structured data. Oftentimes, tree structured data is something is that best describes the problem to solve, and therefore, uh, basically, uh, management of data placed inside the tree becomes really the problem to solve. So, when dealing with the tree structured data, programs often have to discriminate between a leaf node and a branch. In our example, with user accounts and user groups is that when we we say that you know the, the entire idea of managing this tree data structure is to actually handle the accounts but the groups happen to be account groups just happen to be a, a useful a mechanism to aggregate and combine uh, privileges of, uh, of diff different users. So, uh, so therefore, account definitely in this situation becomes an example of a leaf or terminating, uh, ter uh, basically the terminating uh, node in this tree, whereas the group like this is just uh, an example of a, of a branch. Uh, that essentially allows us to navigate further, navigate to other subgroups or uh, the actual uh, accounts. So this would be a non-terminating non non uh, node in the tree or something we would uh, say is a branch, right? So, so this is uh, this is the uh, uh, the types of nodes that we can uh, clearly identify inside the tree, right? So anything that sits in the middle over here, right? Uh, anything uh, right here, right in the middle, is a branch, and uh, anything over here which cannot have any descend descendants, uh, that is the terminating node. So two types of the nodes that we can uh, quickly recognize in those uh, uh, tree structures. So uh, since the design of the uh, and, and maintenance of, of the data inside the tree comes with a set of challenges, right? We say that the code is likely to grow in complexity and therefore there could be additional errors that we have to be aware of and, and uh, they become more challenges. So the solution is Perhaps, you know, there could be multiple solutions, but one of the solutions is to have an interface, have a, an interface that allow treating uh, both uh, the leaf nodes and branch nodes, both terminating and non-terminating nodes in the tree, uh, to manage them uniformly through the same interface. Okay, and by the way, which is demonstrated on this next diagram, where we say, okay, this is the component, and we have a leaf uh, which terminates the tree, uh, which implements this interface, uh, or you know derives itself from this uh, abstract uh, class, uh, if it's an abstract class. And we also have the composite, and that's the name for the for the entire design, um, uh, the entire design pattern is that the composite represents the branch, and so it essentially. Uh, both implements the the uh, interface of the component uh, class if this is an abstract class, but also can can be a parent to a number of children uh, which are also component classes. So we will demonstrate this in the code. So um, so the component here declares the interface for objects in the composition, and you know the, the general. Uh, idea of this type of arrangement is like composition which presents itself as a tree, right? So if necessary, component implements default behavior common to all classes. Leaf represents the terminal objects and composite represents a component with children, right? Uh, or non-terminating or uh, node or the tree branch. And composite also implements methods to manipulate uh, the children. So clearly, uh, these are these are pretty much all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, challenges. The complexity of what needs to happen essentially in this um, 
in this tree over here. We need to be able to add new children, create new uh, groups of accounts, which are branch nodes. Uh, sometimes a, a, a significant uh, challenge could be to remove uh, a, certain, a certain node, which perhaps means also that we are going to be removing all of the children, if it has any. And uh, so these are all of the things that we need to, to deal with. But once we configure the structure, um, we also should be able to quickly navigate to a specific account and be able to compose all of the you know, privileges that the account is supposed to, uh, to be uh, to be inheriting from all of the groups if it actually derives itself from a group. Uh, by the way, um, uh, in this arrangement, we may also begin to require that any account has to be made part of a certain user group. So this way we can have a, uh, a uniform entry into the tree so that if we have a, a certain group at the top uh, of the tree at the at the root of the tree, uh, then uh, we can say that uh, all accounts and all other groups uh, should be deriving from that group, and therefore we can navigate to any part of this uh, tree through a common entry point, a common root node. Right. So sometimes it's a it's a good idea to essentially remind ourselves that we need to uh, all that we need to do basically uh, once we place this. Uh, entire arrangement and create this in memory, all we have to do is essentially keep track of the root. If, if we have access to the root, we have access to everything else inside that tree. Okay, so let's see. Um, so um, the objects are composed into tree structures to represent part whole uh, hierarchies. Composite lets clients treat both individual objects as well as objects, uh, object compositions uniformly. So uniformly means that if you want to locate the object, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're talking to the root or a certain part of it. All you have to say, give me an object, and the object will be uh, will be located in that tree, and you will get the access to it. And at the same time, uh, you know uh, you can also use the root uh, here to, uh, to to say what should be the privileges for that specific account, and uh, it can be computed by you know accessing the root node, and uh, everything everything should be uh, computed according to the to the data structure, right? Because we can make this account part of the administrator group, or we can make this account part of the you know uh, uh, guest uh, guest users, uh, which are which have the least privileges in the system. So of course, user groups and user accounts are just uh, uh, one of the examples. Uh, similar uh, similar. Um, uh, example would be say that uh, if if uh, in our semester project we have this elevator simulation in the building, uh, and more specifically that building could be um, could be a place uh, such as a museum perhaps which is expecting groups of visitors, and so we need to manage groups of visitors. So if we already have visitors, we may also want to decide to manage groups of visitors. And uh, if we want groups of visitors, perhaps we can have, uh, you know, we can have uh, a, a, a possibility of having individual visitors like this, individual visitors, but also groups of visitors like this. Um, so we have a group which, uh, you know, which uh, itself uh, uh, holds a number of visitors, and then uh, we need to find a way to maybe have a uniform collection of some sort that allows us to manage individual visitors, but also groups of visitors, right? So this already begins to look like a tree of things, uh, and of course, uh, again, this would all, all be possible if we could have derived uh, uh, both group and the individual visitor from, from or have it implement the same interface, right? If they implement the same interface, we could use that interface uh, uh, reference inside this collection of all visitors and uh, be able to manage both 
individual visitors and groups. So this is uh, this is a very common uh, problem to solve because if you have a dynamic, um, uh, you know, uh, dynamic uh, uh, array of some sort or dynamic collection of objects of some sort, it's very easy to uh, run into the situation that all of a sudden you need to manage uh, these uh, individual objects as a group. And there, again, you come back to a possibility of creation of a tree that, you know, instead of using just a simple uniform collection, you may decide that you want to um, create those intermediate uh, group objects which would uh, aggregate uh, additional objects into a, a group and uh, that would uh, uh, again come back to the idea of a tree so the problem is very very common and of course the uh, the software ideal is to use some some sort of uniform interface to everything so hence the idea that uh, um, we use essentially a top level in the hierarchy uh, component which uh, which has an interface supported by both uh, leaf or terminating nodes and uh, the composites which are which are groups of of, uh, of uh, other leaves or other components uh, in the system, right? So this is the the diagram, and so in UML, it's 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 very common uh, to uh, have basically a class that uh, that is a subclass of essentially it's 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 superclass or it's base class, and at the same time it can have a collection of uh, you know of other objects of this type of the of the type that corresponds to its base class or super class right so this type of arrangement this time of this type of UML design uh, ba basically allows us to build uh, trees so let's see um, yeah we can uh, we can try uh, writing your our own sample. There's a composite sample over here. Um, we can um, we can think of a um, of of this uh, of this specific challenge with uh, user accounts and and uh, you know user privileges and user groups. We can we can we can try uh, building our own little little demo of that. How about that? Let's do it. <coughs> 